Right now, Russian forces are setting their sights on the capital city of Kyiv, advancing to the doorstep of that city. Sirens warning civilians in Kyiv as airstrikes approached overnight. Russian bombs destroying infrastructure north and south of the city, causing a massive fire at a warehouse. Satellite images show Russian artillery bombarding Kyiv. British defense officials say that the bulk of Russia's forces are now just 15 miles from the city center. Fierce fighting also underway in many other parts of the country. Cities in Ukraine's east and south are under a sustained Russian onslaught. And new today, the leaders of Germany and France calling for an immediate ceasefire during a phone call this morning with Russia's Vladimir Putin. Ukraine's civilians desperate to escape. Today, at least 13 humanitarian corridors are open for evacuations. The U.N. says more than 2.5 million Ukrainians have fled the country. I want to turn now to Anderson Cooper anchoring our live coverage in, Le in Lviv, that's western Ukraine. And Anderson, as we are watching Russian troops encroach upon the capital city of Kyiv, it was chilling to hear Garry Kasparov in the last hour say that what we saw happen in Mariupol is just a preview, in his opinion, of what's going to happen in Kyiv. Yeah, and certainly a lot of people throughout Ukraine are watching what is happening in Mariupol, the, the, sieging, the siege on that city, the, the flattening of, of neighborhoods uh, in some parts uh, of that city, uh, a city which is, uh, according to officials there, has really run out of supplies, uh, drinking water. It is a really a miserable scene and, again, a harbinger, perhaps, of what might happen in other cities. Sina and Selma uh, Abdelaziz is here with me in, in Lviv. Uh, let's talk about a uh, little bit. We heard this call from Macron and uh, German Chancellor Schultz uh, to Vladimir Putin calling for a ceasefire. The, uh, President Zelensky has recently sp uh, spoken about something like this. Yes, yeah, some very positive signs from President Zelensky, who says we've stopped exchanging ultimatums with Russian, the Russian delegation and we've started actually talking. I mean, that's a pretty key indication when you're looking at the last several days in Turkey where it seemed like talks were stalling, where it seemed like there was no middle ground between the two sides. But here's the key thing, the same thing we're hearing from European leaders, which is that any negotiations must start with a ceasefire. And that's going to mean the guns have to fall silent. Is the Russian military willing to do that? Is President Vladimir Putin willing to do that? Especially when we're looking at humanitarian evacuations even yeah. being targets of attacks. When the two foreign ministers met uh, in Turkey on Thursday, I believe it was, really nothing came out of that. And in fact, it seemed almost like a step back with the, the, uh, the Russian foreign minister kind of going back to talking points that Vladimir Putin had been giving early on about denazification, about neut neutral, uh, neut uh, a neutral Ukraine. I mean, what's going to be key here is what does President Putin want out of this, right? I think this is obviously an offensive that's astounded all of us, even in its scope and scale. I mean, one of the towns that was attacked yesterday is just 70 miles from the border with Poland. So we are talking about an offensive that's really reached far into Ukraine that, of course, has has its capital, uh, Kyiv, under uh, major concern, under intense attack. So what is the end goal here for yeah. President Putin? What is enough to end this? We know from President Zelensky's side, what he's offered, his olive branch, is the promise that Ukraine would remain a neutral country, that it would not join NATO, which is not on the table anyways. But there's going to have to be some back and forth. And it, look, the, the Russian president does have a strategic goal here, and that is access to a warm water port. What does that access look like territorially yeah. when you're looking at the east of the country? Yeah, and whether that's acceptable to, to Ukrainians uh, at all, it's obviously uh, one of the major issues. So, uh, uh, Abdelaziz, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, we, uh, we are witnessing a, a brutal onslaught of cities across the country, and that includes areas that had been largely spared from the, the bloodshed thus far. Seen as Matthew Chance uh, has more. This is a new front in Russia's Ukrainian war. Emergency workers battling flames caused by airstrikes on the central city of Dnipro. Ukrainian officials say an apartment building, a kindergarten and a two-story shoe factory were targeted and destroyed, causing casualties. To the west, in the Ukrainian city of Lutsk, just 70 miles from NATO ally Poland, a strategic airfield also came under attack. 
With the invasion now in its third week, Russia appears to be widening its assault. And there are concerns of escalation too. Russian state television has been broadcasting these images of fighters from Syria said to be volunteering to join the fight on Russia's side. The Kremlin backs the Syrian regime of Bashar al-Assad and the scenes appeared shortly after Putin told his Security Council that foreign fighters should be invited to join in. So if you see people who want voluntarily without payment to come and help people living in Donbas, well, we need to meet their efforts and help them to reach the combat zone. These are thugs from Syria, said President Zelensky of Ukraine, from the country destroyed in the same way the occupiers are destroying us, he said. Later, at a Kremlin meeting with his Belarusian ally, President Putin struck a different, upbeat tone, saying he'd been informed of certain positive shifts in recent negotiations with Ukraine, although it remains unclear what those positive shifts could be but they don't seem to be diverting Russia from its invasion course. New satellite images suggest a massive Russian military column north of the capital, Kiev, has now dispersed, with some elements repositioned into forests and countryside around the capital. And these are the latest images from the besieged Ukrainian town of Volnavaka in the country's southeast. Russian troops moving through the streets, which are now reported to be under their full control. Bit by bit, Ukraine, it seems, is being overrun. Matthew Chance, CNN, Kyiv. With us now is Helena Yanchenko. Mm -hmm. She's deputy majority leader in Ukraine's parliament. She is in Western Ukraine. Thanks so much for being with us. Russian forces have been widening uh, their strikes uh, now to Western Ukraine with, with bombs and missiles. Um, why do you think they have hit the airfield in, in Lutz? Uh, I think this is pretty clear. Uh, they are uh, trying to shell the infrastructure object. Uh, while uh, air air uh, air uh, related uh, infrastructure, so Ukraine has uh, less uh, uh, infrastructure to to fight back. But we still have uh, airports and we can use planes and we desperately need uh, more military planes to actually fight back with uh, fight back uh, with Russians in air. And uh, we like we really hope that we will receive more uh, more military aid, uh, including air defense, uh, both uh, anti missile and uh, and military plane to protect our people. I should say that uh, actually Russian troops did not receive uh, any major uh, military successes. And that's why they have started a real terror uh, in the land of Ukraine. They have started to kill uh, to kill innocent civilians and to uh, shell uh, just neighborhood, uh, the residential neighborhoods, uh, hospitals, kindergartens and school massively. What they are doing in uh, Mariupol is a crime against humanity. Uh, also, uh, you mentioned uh, previously in your program that uh, uh, we have managed to negotiate the humanitarian corridors. That's true, it happened a week ago, but uh, we see that in a number of cities around Kyiv and also in the east of Ukraine, we still can't um, we still can't uh, let people out of uh, the city. We can't help them to evacuate uh, themselves because Russian troops are shooting at innocent civilians. They are shooting at uh, families with uh, children at their arms. In Mariupol, a couple of days ago, uh, Russian uh, Russians have uh, shooted at maternity uh, house, and these are all the horrible yeah. things that uh, Ukrainian civilians and Ukrainian cities are going through. Yeah. Let me ask you, President Zelensky yesterday in a press conference um, talked about the need for a ceasefire before any uh, substantive talks can really take place, before any uh, real negotiations can take place. Do you see any signs from the Russian Federation? President Zelensky in that press conference said he was pleased with some of the signals coming from the Russian Federation. But do you, are you at all hopeful that Russia would agree to a ceasefire in order to conduct serious talks? 
Uh, well, you know, uh, hope uh, d dies the, the last one. So we, we do hope for, for the better, but currently they see that Russians do not follow their own uh, agreements. So they promise uh, to the Ukrainian side that they will let uh, civilians uh, to evacuate themselves and they don't. They uh, promise that they will let, let some uh, food and water in the cities, but they don't. In Mariupol, a number of people, including children, have died of uh, dehydration. So this is the kind of the things that you don't accept to happen in the modern world on the European continent.